Hello, good afternoon, very warm welcome to you. As Łukasz told, uh, introduced me, and you might have seen our presentations from thejournet.pl. Uh, in most recent past, as my excellent preceding speakers highlighted that extensively, uh, in recent days and times, we have seen skyrocketing growth of contents that are close to sex, sexual abuse of uh, teenagers, underage, uh, uh, but this was uh, generated by young people uh, themselves by making such materials themselves by taking photos. And there were so many uh, drivers which uh, made them to prepare such nude photos. Uh, so this brings us to the title, are nude photos necessary? Are they a must? And young people say, well, this is uh, part of our life, this is part of our reality, this is part of our relationship building. So this looks like a very difficult problem. So let's uh, focus and uh, uh, look at the present day of a young person, of a teenager. In the opening lecture of our conference, we spoke about the various behaviors uh, that would be typical of young people when they are online. And no matter if they are uh, younger or older, they are in a way glued to smartphones. They share everything uh, with, the, uh, with their dear with their uh, parent with their um, friends and the closest friends and whatever they do they post on the internet and uh, this will of course have bearing on something that is related to their sexuality so since they go on sharing everything why should they exclude anything and as we ask teenage girls this is uh, the outcome of the torn foundation research how many girls um, uh, post their intimate uh, materials uh, online and uh, the questions that we asked uh, uh, their female um, guardians and how many uh, would uh, post would put up their own intimate materials online so this is 20 percent of girls 10 percent of boys age bracket 13 to 17 and we have as many many as 26 percent or 40 percent of female male guardians respectively so this is like something that um, emerged uh, for all of us uh, because of the advancement of technology, especially during lockdown stages, which were filled uh, so acutely by someone who is uh, young and detached and uh, far away. And we saw that uh, this also uh, 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 triggered of more sexuality and maintaining relationship in online relationships. So um, these relationships uh, suddenly uh, entered our parlors, but also our bedrooms. And when we see uh, sexual contents generated by children themselves, Two questions are to be asked. What were the circumstances for producing such material and what happened then? Uh, because from the journal perspective, we only see like a picture or a film that was sent to us by means of informing us. But if we look uh, uh, inside, we do not focus on the picture itself. We need to look through the broader prism. So I decided to represent it on a graph so as to be able to ask follow-up questions in order to point to the 
circumstances of a given event. What can we see in uh, materials? It sometimes does happen that we, as uh, uh, child guardians or grown-ups, uh, have uh, pictures that are quite brutal on the verge of uh, pornography, whereas they will rather be uh, inclined to show like a bare shoulder um, or a bare shoulder blade. And um, so what we see should produce uh, consequences depending on what there is, because sometimes pictures uh, the young people present violence and this is like a hard porno uh, contents and sometimes this is just a gentle erotic picture and what are the drivers for putting up such materials for trying to share them mind you they are voluntarily taken if someone was forced or blackmailed or manipulated uh, to generate such uh, material. This is a different story. Uh, but we cannot fall into a trap of potential voluntary attitude because uh, young people say, yes, this is what I really wanted. I've, actually, I wanted to do this. And when we ask more searching questions uh, and we ask why they think that posting such materials online would be okay, it turns out that they were sort of, uh, they were um, guided to do so because this is the, they perceive um, building relationships uh, like, and they don't feel okay about taking such a picture, but since in their immediate environment, for instance, in their peer group, or if this is something that they see in media communication, will distort their imagination and will impact their behavior. So here we need to differentiate voluntary materials and those uh, that have been um, um, pressed on uh, on a young person. Who is the recipient of certain material? Is the uh, is it a partner of a kind? Is a, is it uh, um, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or is it someone who is uh, entirely unknown? and who is meant to be just an anonymous recipient that will give some response to this material. But sometimes people pretend to be someone else and the victim uh, thinks that uh, this is like an anonymous respondent, so not uh, having any bearing on reality at hand. And uh, would the recipient expect to, to be getting such material? Uh, there are various discussions, especially in couples. There is, like, there is um, a practice that uh, people agree to post such materials and uh, they fix the day, the hour, and young people and children also some often say that they received such material by surprise. Uh, this was an entire surprise. And what they saw was just disgusting, disgusting. And this was, um, if a kid appears in a popular uh, service and is confronted with such images, this is extremely difficult uh, situation and it is hardly ever reported because children are scared of uh, informing their parents or teachers about it. And now the question is whether uh, these pictures are aimed at 10 years old or 15 years old or 20 years old or, and um, 
We used to have a campaign, my name is Wojtek, I'm 10 years old, uh, and this was the uh, situation of a person disguising himself as a teenager. Now, uh, pedophiles are often quite straightforward, and they say that, yes, I'm much older than you, and... Um, Mm -hmm. We, as adults, we think that we present some uh, erotic or intimate pictures only to your partner in a relationship, whereas uh, such pictures are also sent to friends uh, among teenagers in order to show off. And it is very important to make sure that a teenager really knows all the threats that are entailed by uh, the leakage of such uh, pictures, where the whole world will suddenly turn uh, its back on the person, where such a teenager will be ridiculed and threatened, also physically threatened. Education is so important in this context, sexual education as well as media education, so as to go on repeating to young children uh, and to teenagers that uh, the Internet does not forget and something removed out of context will mean something else. There are also certain risk factors that uh, are very important in considering a situation at school uh, when certain pictures leaked into the local network and uh, the question is whether we see a victim of sexual abuse or a victim of um, pathological environment and, uh, uh, for instance, pornography falsely perceived as this is the only way to make appearance uh, in a group. And here we really need to educate that we are not only about uh, what we look like, we are s someone more. And I think that this is uh, uh, fairly easily to be corrected. Um, so uh, very little assertiveness when one doesn't uh, permit oneself to listen to one's own intentions and intuitions about uploading material in the internet and lack of any support from the families and friends this is so important so important that the kids uh, who know that they have uh, committed uh, some mistake or uh, exposed to some negative experience they know that uh, we are just around the corner uh, that we are for them available um, to uh, uh, to support them and to help them stand by them and uh, so that uh, they realize that there is like a digital footprint that uh, such pictures may um, start living their own life, circulated, shared, uploaded. The sooner we say that this is uh, not permitted, the easier we will uh, interrupt this distribution. Very often, those go-between uh, say that they were multiplying and copying certain materials and they don't know what the source was. When a person that heard about uh, his or her pictures leaking into the internet, one of the worst possible scenarios is that the whole group uh, go on talking about it and the victim herself or himself is at a loss. Uh, also the reactions of the nearest uh, parents, friends, guardians uh, is of vital importance. They need to know how to react, how to respond. Not only adults but also siblings. Uh, is it a kind of blackmail or a revenge? 
This is a very important question. If a teen, teenager uh, is uh, finding himself herself in a very difficult situation, any additional um, preaching like this is your own thought, this is of your own making, uh, this is uh, because of you, uh, this will be challenging any proximity and any uh, closeness. And sometimes uh, it is so that the person who is there on the picture um, doesn't feel bad with it, and we may feel quite bad. Were personal data somehow connected with a picture posted, this might possibly lead to very extre uh, to extremely difficult and dangerous situations. And. Um, we should either give a phone number of a person or um, uh, simply try to remove any uh, additional information uh, so that uh, this person is not easily reached. And what does the victim need? Because sometimes they say, we want to remove this materials from the internet. and. Uh, Perhaps someone will say, yes, I'm near to you, I, I'm with you, and we will go through it together, together. Uh, who is uh, guilty of any leakages? That's a very interesting graph. If we think that the portion of guilt of a victim is shown in yellow, Blue shows uh, the guilt of a distributor or redistributor, and gray is uh, like a mutual guilt uh, gravitating towards uh, the victim, and orange is again shared guilt. Uh, uh, but gravitating more towards those distributing such materials. And uh, here you see that there is uh, a very massive pressure on the victim. Victim is seen as a guilty culprit, and uh, we see that without uh, the complicity of a victim, there would be no uh, there would be no problem. And uh, when such materials are leaked into the uh, internet, I just hope that those copying and multiplying uh, will be found equally guilty and equally uh, to blame. Uh, mind you, we witness uh, a whole of the revolution in terms of behavior, in terms of sexuality, and the question is uh, whether such young people really uh, understand what they are on doing, uh, whether they are uh, uh, doing it fully consciously or whether they just follow the trend. So sexual education and media competence, literacy education would be a great help uh, to diagnose uh, the situation of individual uh, young people. I hope that our uh, children will know how to ask for help as they are lost and our nude pictures necessity. I hope that Lukasz uh, will join me in a moment and relate to me all the feedback that you are giving. Thank you. Martina, thank you so much for this presentation. And uh, my opinion is very positive, uh, but also let me quote uh, some of our participants. Marta says, this, is a super, this has been a super presentation. Uh, Agnieszka says, a lot of very valuable information. This is a very well prepared presentation. Thank you so much. It is an important topic. It's important to learn more about about this, to know what we can do, and 
We heard from people who do not share your enthusiasm when it comes to the introduction of sexual uh, education being so simple. They are afraid this will not happen so easily. Uh, we are over the time. I wanted to ask you a question and give you an opportunity for you to have a word of comment. When we speak about sexual education, we do not speak about the level, but some of these aspects have to be handled in education. So I'm not promoting any particular curriculum or any solutions. This is something of a public debate, for the public debate. And at the end, it is important to ensure that children are safe and I think it will be easier to convince people to introduce uh, such uh, subjects. Um, we have a certain delay uh, of a few minutes. We do apologize, but uh, just if you could just give us a few words of a summary. When we, th we speak a lot about the role that parents play, we say a lot about that we, the fact that we should talk to the children, but um, we want to protect children from the consequences of publishing photographs that are sexual. Well, first of all, we should admit our own mistakes. So we can also say that we've changed uh, our opinion. Professor Pozharski said that he changed his interpretation. Mr. Orlinski also said that 10 years ago he thought differently. So we should be able to admit this to the children. Um, everyone has a right to make mistakes and we have to be able to admit it. And this is just one thing that may prove to be very valuable. That has been very important. Thank you. Thank you all for taking part in this session. I would like to thank, thank all our speakers, and I do apologize for modifying our agenda. We will meet in five minutes to start the next session.